Hi, my name is Jim Sinesco, Vice President with AFC International. And this short video is going to talk about the advantages of using a photoionization detector during hazmat and arson type investigations. One of the advantages of using a photoionization detector is that it's a quick responding detector. Probably of all the detectors that we have used in the fire service, hazmat, and industrial safety and health, the PID is a very quick responding detector. You're looking at time to 90% of concentration or T90s of anywhere between 8 to maybe 12 to 15 seconds. It makes it perfect when we're looking for different gases and vapors in different areas. Uh, it's also very, very good for hazmat operations where you are trying to determine you know, warm and hot zones. So as you're walking with a photoionization detector like the Mini Ray 3000 here, you're going to get very quick responses, giving the ability to mark those locations basically as you're walking. Most other detectors used in, in hazmat applications could take as long as 30 to 60 seconds to give you full value. So again, the PID is very, very quick and very, uh, as far as responding. One of the other advantages is this quick recovery as well. So not only are we getting that great quick response, we're getting a very, very good quick recovery. And we have a very good high range capability with the Mini Ray 3000. We can get up to some cases up to 50,000 parts per million. Yet look at low, low concentrations at 0.1 ppm uh, levels. So the huge range, quick response, quick recovery make a Mini Ray 3000 very much uh, invaluable for a hazmat operation um, or even a meth lab investigation or even for arson. Now, one other thing that you might not know is that. PID technology or the sensor is a non-destructive form of detection, meaning that we pull in a sample, it gets ionized, we detect it, and then as it leaves the, sense, the uh, instrument itself, right through this port over here on the side, it goes back the way it came. So it's non-destructive. Well, we, that means we can take and use that exit port. They make a fitting that you can actually screw onto the instrument. And with that fitting now, let me get it on here, good here, I can now attach tubing that then leads to a gas collection bag, a gas sampling bag. So now I'm actually reading this, the readings, I'm actually doing real-time monitoring. Now I get a hit, I can attach tubing to a valve and open up the valve on the bag and as I'm detecting it and getting real-time readings seeing concentrations I can then fill up a gas sample bag that can be used for further analysis now why is that important well it's important because a PID one of its limitations is that it's a general detector it's gonna see lots of things right so if I'm using an ionization um, potential a lamp of a 10.6 electron volt lamp, I'm going to see lots of chemicals. Even though I am somewhat selective there, I, I still see hundreds and hundreds of different chemicals. So again, the weakness of the PID is it's not going to speciate. It's not going to tell me exactly what I have. It's a good measuring tool. It tells me I have a, a good high level or low level or no level detection, but it doesn't give me this, the specifics as far as what it is. So using it as a measuring tool, using a secondary type analyzer, maybe a, uh, an infrared, infrared gas ID, or a, a GC mass spec of some sort, I can then take that sample that I've just collected, and again, I, I, I think I have an idea of what range I, I was, because my PID is very good at telling me how much of something, but it doesn't tell me specifically what it is. So by taking that sample, running it to an analyzer or a, another detector that can actually speciate and give me more information is a real benefit, I think, in my mind, as a big benefit. Because it really boils down to how much we have of a specific compound and then what we're going to do to mitigate that. So as, as far as risk management and assessing the risks, we need to know a little bit more than just, yeah, we have something that looks pretty, pretty dangerous, but what is it? And it may turn out that whatever it is might not be such a, a, a bad situation at those concentrations. Then again, it might be the reverse. It might be something very, very dangerous. So a case in point would be something like, like BTEX components. I've got benzene, toluene, xylene, ethylbenzene. Well, together, total VOC, 
I might have 100, 200, 1,000 part per million. But the benzene is the one that I'm really worried about, right? That's that 0.5 to 10 ppm danger level, known carcinogen. So until I actually run it into a, another device, such as a gas chromatograph or a mass spec instrument, um, I really won't know what specifics I have out of that gas stream. So using a PID in conjunction with that type of technology, in this case a gas sample bag with our sample we just collected and detected, That'll give me the information I need to make a much better assessment of the risks that are going to be attained or not attained by taking care of or remediating a situation, a hazmat situation. So anyway, Kelly Bond bags here like this one, anywhere between $30 and $40. They're specially lined to be able to contain a sample. They come with an on-off valve, so you, once you fill the bag up, you can, can shut the sample off and then sand it to another, bag, another analyzer. Uh, the instrument and the adapter, uh, maybe maybe $30, $40 for this adapter. It did come with and does come with when you buy the, the kits uh, from Ray System. So that's already included in there. So again, I just wanted to kind of point out something that might be obvious, um, but a lot of people I'm, I'm finding out I really don't understand or know that that's uh, the case with a, a PID. Also, something else to consider. The Mini Ray 2000s and older PIDs. You can use those for basically gas sampling. Um, even though maybe the lamp and the detector are not working, as long as the pump and it holds a charge, uh, the battery holds a charge, and you can use that, we can still use it as a way to pull a sample, right? It's intrinsically safe, meaning it's not going to cause an explosion when we go into an explosive environment. I can actually pinpoint with the probe, find out where I want to go ahead and take a sample and then go ahead and, and connect up to the bag using the same fitting. So old Mini Ray 2000s, even Mini Rays even before the 2000, as long as it has an exit port and we can get a fitting that can actually take that sample and direct it towards a gas sample bag, it might breathe new life in some old pieces of equipment you might have hanging around. So if you have any questions, Give us a call at AFC International, 800-952-3293. Be more than happy to answer any of these questions. Give us a call. We can get you a quote, get you a demo, kind of talk over some of your applications. Uh, and again, thanks for, for watching. Be safe. See you next time.